parallel lines cut by a transversal. First, let's look at parallel lines. I have two lines, notice the arrowheads, and then up here, notice these shapes. These triangles are telling me that these lines are parallel. The red line I have added is called a transversal. A transversal creates some special angles when it cuts through parallel lines. Let's number our angles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The first type of special angle we're going to look at are called vertical angles. Vertical angles are always congruent. Vertical angles are angles that share a common center. So I could look at these four angles and talk about vertical angles. 1 and 7 are vertical angles, and 2 and 8 are labeling vertical angles. Up here, with this common center point, 4 and 6 are vertical angles, and 3 and 5 are vertical angles. Because they're congruent, I would write angle 1 is congruent to angle 7, angle 2 is congruent to angle 8, angle 3 is congruent to angle 5, and angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, because again, vertical angles are congruent. The next angles we want to talk about are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are in the same relative location. Notice that angle 1 is above the transversal, but to the left of the parallel line. Angle 3 is above the transversal, but to the left of its parallel line. Therefore, angle 1 and angle 3 correspond. Look at angle 8. Angle 8 is below the transversal and to the left of the parallel line. Angle 6 is also below the transversal and to the left of the parallel line. Therefore, angle 8 is corresponding to angle 6. Who's corresponding to angle 2? 2 is above the transversal and to the right of the parallel. Oh, angle 4 is above the transversal and to the right of the parallel. 2 and 4 must be corresponding angles, which means 7 and 5, which are both below the transversal and to the right of the parallel lines, must also be corresponding. Corresponding angles are also congruent. So I could write angle 1 congruent to angle 3, angle 2 congruent to angle 4, angle 8 congruent to angle 6, and angle 7 congruent to angle 5. Corresponding angles, they're also congruent in parallel lines cut by a transversal. Now let's talk about alternate interior angles. Alternate means that they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Interior means that they live in between the parallel lines. So if I look at angle 2, he's in between the parallel lines and he's above the transversal. Who happens to live between the parallel lines below the transversal? Oh, angle 6. Angle 2 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles. Look now at angle 7. It is below the transversal and in between the parallel lines. So who lives above the transversal in between the parallel lines? Oh, the 3. 7 and 3 are alternate interior angles. There are only two pair in this picture. In parallel lines cut by a transversal, Alternate interior angles are also congruent. There are only two pair, so angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, and angle 7 is congruent to angle 3. And let's look at alternate exterior angles. Alternate again means one above the transversal, one below the transversal. Exterior means outside of the parallel lines. So angle 1 is an alternate exterior with angle 5, and angle 8 is an alternate exterior to angle 4. When we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate exterior angles are also congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 5, and angle 8 is congruent to angle 4. So now, let's say that I tell you that angle 2 is 30 degrees in this set of parallel lines being cut by a transversal. Can you determine the angle measures for the other angles? Well, we know that vertical angles are congruent, so angle 8 must be 30 degrees. We know that corresponding angles must be congruent. Angle 2 corresponds to angle 4, so 4 must be 30 degrees. 
Again, vertical angles are congruent, so if 4 is 30 degrees, that means that 6 is 30 degrees. Well, how am I going to figure out the other four angles? Oh, yeah. This linear pair, angle 1 and angle 2, make a straight line, which means they're supplementary. Supplementary angles total 180 degrees. Well, I have 30 degrees here. How many more degrees do I need to make 180? That's right, 150 degrees. Well, if this is 150 degrees, his vertical angle is 150 degrees. If he's 150 degrees, his corresponding angle is 150 degrees. And if he is 150 degrees, his vertical angle is 150 degrees. Easy to find missing angle measurements.